Oh man, this is gonna be glorious. Miss Erica. Quiero. <laughs> oh my god, this made my day. <laughs> it hurts. <coughs> my belly hurts. <laughs> Having fun, Tero. I hope you die in a fire, Tero. The time will come when I'll be the one laughing, Tero. Uh <laughs> Please stop it. You're going to kill me. Don't say anything else for a while. I don't think I can take it. I am Erika Furudo, Carol. I am a great detective, Carol. How dare you laugh at me, Carol? What a terrible curse. <laughs> Miss Beatrice, I'll use my wand of cure on Erika as soon as she comes back. Understood. Free charges should fix most of them. What about the irreparable damage done on my ego, Carol? Who's gonna fix that, Carol? Nobody. There's no way of fixing that. Alright, alright. I'm starting to feel pity for your cruel fate. So I'll teach you a way to end your curse right now. Such a gracious person I am. How, Kiro? What kind of method is that, Kiro? Naturally, it is need to be kissed by a charming prince. <laughs> Very funny, Kiro. Where the hell am I supposed to find a prince, Kiro? Oh, but it doesn't need to be literally a prince. An handsome and valiant swordsman is good enough. Yes, in other words, a kiss from Bella will do the trick. And you're just gonna allow that, Beatrice? Cause I know that Erika's gonna be opposed to that, but... Ugh. What? Balor? Sorry, Erika, you're on your own. Fuck you. Who the hell cares? I'd rather stay a toad forever than be kissed by you. Minus 10 HP. <gasps> Get up. <laughs> oh, God. I think that right now she's at 4 HP. Yeah, I mean, if uh, maximum HP is 114, she's at, me she's at 4 right now. One more miss and she's gonna die. <laughs> So we all see a toad coming back from the door Erika chose? Yes, knowing already that this would happen, Belfagor opens the door for her and explains the situation. By the way, Beatrice. Yes, what is it, Balor? You're the best game master ever. I know that, bitch. And I'm proud of that. <laughs> How long does the simulation need to last, Carol? Depends. But I guess it will end before the final showdown. To Jesus, that long? Yeah, better, Kero. So, are you finished with this trial? Yes. Thanks to Erika's <clears throat> heroic sacrifice, the fourth part of the trial of the Seven Sisters of Purgatory is now complete. She successfully and brilliantly managed to find out which is the door and that leads to the next challenge. Alright, let's go! Carol. And all this without using the readily available solution. Exactly as she wished for. My vengeance shall be legendary, Carol. Being the valiant heroes that you are, your morale remains unaffected by the view of your paladin companion turned into a toad. If anything, it raises more and more. The more you laugh at her. The door that will lead you to the next part of the trial is in front of you. 
the time has come to cross it. All right, well, let's see what the next trial is going to be about. Oh. A long corridor. A dark atmosphere. Epic background music. Ooh. That sweet, sweet, epic Yumineko music. There's no doubt. This is a dungeon. Ah, so we finally get to do some dungeon crawling in the end. Will there be monsters on the way? Most probably. Alright. Like, one of the things I was also excited about in this, some some fighting, some, some usage of D&D terms and, like, all that stuff. Like, calculating, like, HPs and such. Great! It's about time we get to unleash our best attacks. What exactly do you think you can do with such a lame weapon, Kero? <laughs> the frog head pin on her hair. You'll just embarrass yourself, Kero. <laughs> Not more than you, Kero. Shut up. I'll still do better than a toad. Yes. You're about one step above that level, Kero. A dungeon. This sounds exciting. And if I'm to think about it, I get the feeling that the trial that will focus on like fighting and, and such is probably going to be Satan, so I am curious. Technically, this isn't a dungeon. But it's true that in role-playing games, the term has extended to every kind of monster-filled series of rooms and quarters that the party needs to pass through. No point in nitpicking. Mm, let's explain this place. Wait, my child. This place is dangerous. It's probably filled with traps, monsters, and other tricks. I guess we could do like a perception check. Like somebody who is good at perception. <laughs> Dungeons are dangerous. That's right. And if you're too careless, we might lose your way. Dungeons are often very elaborate mazes. But Nanaki, what do you suggest to prevent that? The answer is simple. Mapping. Mapping? It refers to the action of drawing a map on a sheet of paper while the party moves through the dungeon. Mm hmm. You know, it kind of reminds me of a. of a thing uh, that my father told me like once. At some point, like. probably during high school, <clears throat> me and my father we played a thief game. I think it was the third thief game. And she used to tell me that way back in like the 90s or like early 2000s, he himself, because he used to play games as well. He used to play games as well. And one of his favorite series is Thief. It was up his alley. And he used to tell me that he would do stuff like that, like map around and go around. That is basically where my father taught, taught me about the whole, hey, you have like a maze. How about you just uh, stick to the right wall, and eventually you will find a way, uh, for the most part. Like, usually in a maze, the best tactic would be to just stick to one direction, and that will be the way to go, instead of just going randomly. Sounds bothersome. It's not. It's very fun. Uh, really? Oh, I don't want to spoil your fun. I leave it to you. No problem. Mapping. A classmate of mine told me that it's mandatory in video games like Black Onyx. I don't know that one. Now it would be cool if they make an auto map function in the future. Auto map? Why? Where would the fun be then? You know... There is uh, something to what George says and... Oh my god, I could, I could go on a tangent right over here about video games, but... You know... <clears throat> There is this argument that, for the most part in video games nowadays, like, your hand is being held like, too much in terms of video game directioning and such, that uh, the game is, off, is being too lenient on you instead of making you discover things by yourself and, you know, 
do things by yourself and that is shown in how much UI you have like best example I can offer is like the f like like but like the Bethesda games you have like a huge map and all you do is like follow the waypoint like on the UI like on your screen you follow that direction all the way boom 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 that's it kind of robs you of the experience of exploration I mean you can still do exploration but the point is that your hand is being held a little too much nowadays in video games next they'll make an auto battle and an auto move and that exa exists too <laughs> in turn based to uh, RPGs slash JRPGs you have this function of of auto battle and I guess that would be pretty useful when you have like when you have to grind for your next dungeon like you grind in one of the earlier battles but it becomes so monotonous you instead to go for an auto battle or something and that will do the trick done done and done uh, seriously, the day will come when people will play games where there will be no interaction at all. And all you need to do will be just watch the cutscenes and read the text. I know, right? <laughs> what kind of idiot would do would play such games? Quote unquote games. What? No. There's no way such a thing would work. Unless they had a lot of busty girls with nice asses. I might play it in that case. With uh, some uh, demon girls in skimpy clothes and bunny girls. Hmm. Now, what are we waiting for? Let's go! Wait, Kero. Where's the demon, Kero? There must be a demon around here, Kero. Eh, that's chill. I must have got this as another part of the trial after all. I don't see anyone around here. Maybe we need to find the demon first. I guess it's as you say, Kero. Getting through a maze is by itself a trial. A very classical one, Kero. Let's not waste any more time then. Let's see what's at the end of this corridor first. <laughs> okay. Very, um... Like, very early adventure type game. <laughs> From like the 90s and the 80s. Now, here's the thing though. Erika got turned into a frog. I don't think that she's going to be able to fight. So, I don't think we have to worry about her dying in battle, right? I assume. Because she's at 4 HP. And I don't know how many potions we have. Like, like health potions. Great. A fork. Where do we go now? It doesn't matter. There's no point in trying to figure out which is the right path. You cannot possibly guess that. What matters is to learn step by step how this maze is structured, so as to not to run in circles. This is where my mapping comes into play. Alright, George. Let's say we take the left path. If it's the correct one, we'll just proceed. If it's wrong, we'll learn from our mistake, and we'll never take it again. Isn't there a trick to find a maze's exit with absolute certainty? I heard that if you hug the left wall, sooner or later you're bound to find an exit. Yeah. That works in most of the cases, provided there's a linear structure. Yeah, because maybe there's like a... Like, there are situations where even if you were to hug like a wall, like one direction, you're still going to go in circles. For example, a garden maze's exit must be on an outer wall, so this trick will most certainly succeed. Although, it might not be the fastest way. It's certainly the most secure. Conversely, you can just move randomly and hope for a miracle to guide you to the goal. Although, luck this might prove to be faster. <laughs> miracle. Imagine if uh, Ben Castell would make like a cameo in this. And she would end up seeing Erika in her toad-like state. And she is gonna laugh. And Erika is gonna cry. <laughs> but yeah, I also make you waste a lot of time for nothing if you're unlucky. Foolish people, Kero. Luck and miracles are not given to humans randomly, Kero. 
one must prove to be worthy of them, and only then he will receive their blessing, Kettle. That's right. So let's grab that miracle with certainty, and let's avoid endlessly wandering inside this dungeon. <laughs> All three witches are perking their ears when he when she when he said that. Huh? A dead end. Oh, that was fast. So what do we do now? What else do you want to do, you stupid kettle? We'll just turn around and take another path, kettle. Kettle, 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 kettle. Here comes the toad. <laughs> Shut up, stupid brat. Oh, uh oh, I think she's dead. <laughs> Erika takes 5 points of damage. You know, this really is like a video game. Okay, I guess I assume that she's not dead right now. <laughs> so I guess her HP is... Maybe... Hold on a second. What is this 12 HD? Like, I'm not sure what that is. Hey, hey. Maria doesn't know video games. Maria only plays with Sakutaro and her other friends. That's sad. You should ask Rosa Obasan to buy you a Famicom, an MSX, or a NIC PC 8801. Jesus freaking Christ. I only recognize the Famicom, and even that is. Like, what? You tell me. I've been begging for a Famicom for a whole year now. You should ask Mion. She is uh, good with that sort of stuff. My mom's against it. She says video games make people dumb. Um, mm. There is a discussion around that. Damn, I want to play Super Mario. Mm -hmm. What we you saying? can play with Super Mario. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. <laughs> that's right. Thank you, Mario. Okay, guys, let's stop this. Huh? What's the matter? All this talking about video games. Give it a rest. This is not a video game. Oh, that's right. Making our characters talking about video games. That's metagaming, right? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> of course, that's also one of the reasons. But that's not what really worries me. Huh? I mean, they can talk about, like outside IRL stuff, as long as it's not something that is important to decision-making and the story itself. Because we can consider that like, I don't know, just a random meta humor, humorous banter <laughs> that they can do for comedy's sake. That, wait a minute, these characters are not supposed to know about this sort of stuff. What the fuck? <laughs> it more makes you laugh more than anything. But I want to avoid at all costs as a magic interference. I don't understand. I don't either. It's alright if you don't. Just d do what I told you. Don't worry about this dead end. Now let's mark my map. We won't make the same mistake again. Alright, well, I guess let's go back. But this time there's a chest. Great. Open it. Let's see what's inside. Well, first, do we have like any way of checking it to see if it's a trap? And I guess we shall see if it's locked or not. No problem. This is why rogues are great. They can lockpick everything with ease. Big deal, Carol. You only take two hints of my size to break the chest open, Carol. Shut up, Toad. Don't mind, Erika. Open it. Yeah, yeah. Give me a second. Jessica opens the chest. I think you were supposed to do like a lock picking check there as well, from what I know. Jessica obtains a potion. All right. I thought I told you to stop that. What? What did I do wrong? 
this is not some dungeon in a video game. But I wasn't talking about video games at all! Even worse, you're treating this dungeon crawling as if you were playing it in a video game. Huh? Jessica opens the chest. Jessica obtains a potion. Now, oh, come on. Just like the text caption in some cheap computer role-playing game. Really? How should I know? I've never played a computer role-playing game in my whole life. And I wish I had. Then why did you say that? I don't know. I just thought it was cool. Never mind. Let's resume the game. There is something up with this. I cannot put my finger on why Beatrice is being so against us talking about video games. There is a motive behind it. This part is mapped. Let's backtrack. Are we actually going to be able to attract somebody that we don't want? Is Beatrice worried about somebody popping in once we talk about video games like enough? I don't know. My, this is a this is a pretty big maze, indeed. Test. I can open it. All right. This time it's one thousand gold pieces. All right. Are we actually gonna be able to do something with the money? Like maybe we have like a secret vendor somewhere. Like a secret, uh, Mr. Oh God! A goat draws near. A single goat against the five of us? You gotta be kidding! Bring it on! I'll slash you to pieces. All right. Roll initiative. I won the initiative. Preemptive strike. All right. Great. The goat takes twenty-two points of damage. Awesome blow. Money I cast enfeebling. No! <gasps> oh my god, am I actually gonna <laughs> am I actually gonna be interact interacting with this? That or we're able to actually visualize like the HP. <laughs> okay. This guy attacks. Goat takes eight points of damage. The goat attacks. Alright. Jessica takes 24 points of damage. Better attacks. Alright. Gold truth. Wow. I feel like that's a bit of an overkill there. Goat takes 60, 76 points of damage. Holy crap. That is actually a lot of damage. What the fuck? Better defeats goat. The party gains 60 experience. The party obtains 1,200 1, GP. Man, now I actually want like a like an actual interactive video game like this with uh, the Mineko characters, like sound effects, uh, songs, and everything. Okay, now you've done it. Magic interference. Magic interference. I don't understand what's going on. You mentioned it earlier, but I don't get what you mean by that. It means that a foreign magic is interfering with mine, causing my power to weaken. Foreign magic? Like, am I right? Is somebody gonna arrive here if we keep doing this magic, like, video game stuff? In this world, there isn't just a single kind of magic. There are many of them. When magics of different nature and origin are clashing, you get very weird results. In the worst case scenario, they nullify each other. Okay. Lucky for me, the kind of magic you've summoned still remain, retains a certain degree of compa compatibility with mine. But at this point, I don't have total control over the game board anymore. Whoa, 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 slow down. We summoned a foreign magic? What the hell are you talking about? Normally, a mere human like you filled with anti-magic toxin could never summon magic. Magic is usually created by a powerful witch such as myself. However, there are special cases where groups of humans, with the right conditions, can lower the level of their own anti-magic toxin, allowing magic to spontaneously manifest in this world. I see. 
It's like that time when I went on a summer vacation with my classmates. We were talking about ghost stories and then my friend said, Hey Jesse, did you hear that sound? And I answered, No, no I didn't hear a thing. Why, what have you heard? And then suddenly my other friend said, I heard that too. It was the voice of a little girl crying. And I was like, Stop, stop it. <laughs> this is so funny. But then, just a second after I said that, a faint sound reached my ears. It was the voice. The voice of a little child. She was crying. And then I... Yeah! Me and my friends ran away as fast as we could. Yes, that's a good example. By sharing ghost stories during a summer night, you and your friends weakened the level of your anti-magic toxin. And because of that, you were able to summon the rest of the soul of a long-deceased girl. Okay, well, that I can understand, but... How is it gonna affect us here? Like, are we all gonna turn into actual video game characters? If we keep talking about it? Don't put it that way. You say it like that, it's scary. It was just in our minds. It was a case of mutual suggestion. You're able to say that now after your anti-magic toxin level has been fully recovered. But that night, you really heard that voice, didn't you? At that very point in time, the ghost of that little girl was real. S -s Stop it! Th that's not true! That was just my imagination! Okay, well that part is clear now. But what kind of magic did we summon? And why is it interfering with yours? You are supposed to live inside a fantasy world like those found in popular fantasy books. But that magic was disrupted, and now you're just playing a video game. The hell? We summoned a video game? Great! Let's summon Super Mario then! <laughs> no! Don't even try that! Oh my god. We, act we could actually have like meta powers? Is that what you're trying to say over here? This means... This means... We could actually summon like... All sorts of video game characters that we know! I see. This is actually not uncommon. <laughs> I've seen this happening in other times. When players begin to use words or expressions typical of video games during a gaming session. Game masters usually hate that. Really? Of course they do. The magic interference prevents the game master from weaving the story the way he wanted. I mean, I guess. I guess uh, if you if you are trying to create like a mood with your story as well. Hmm. So, isn't this a sign of your incompetence as a game master? How come you weren't able to keep a firm grasp on the direction of the story? Erika takes ten points of damage. <laughs> All right, I. Yes, we shall keep that in mind. I do want us to push it, though. Now I'm actually very curious about this. Hey, stairs! We can now reach the next floor. Nice. This means this part of the maze is complete. I mean, then again, like, with this whole talk about it turning into a video game... We don't really have much of a choice. I mean, we're we're dealing with HPs and... And such. I, I guess it... Uh, well, I'm... I guess it makes sense when it comes to the characters in the game that they don't talk about this sort of stuff, but... Still, hmm. Nice. This means this part of the maze is complete. Hey, what happened to our portraits? Why don't we have any portraits anymore? <gasps> oh god. We are literally turning into a video game now. Oh, so that's what this whole uh, HP showing on the screen is. It's not just for me, the reader, to know the level of HP. We are literally turning into a into an 80s slash 90s adventure game. With the current technology, it's impossible for video games to show too many graphics. Oh, and we're also making it realistic. I mean, this is 1986. And this magic interference sucks. Uh, I guess this means we cannot really summon like any characters. Damn it. I wanted to see if we could summon like Link. Maybe. A group of goats draws near. There are no attacks. 
All right. Goat A takes 45 points of damage. Down or defeats Goat A. All right. Just got attacks. But misses. What the hell? Good job, Kettle. Shut up. Goat B attacks. Maria takes 27 points of damage. <laughs> Why are you attacking Maria? You're a bad guy. Now you realize it? Maria-chan, you should cast bone armor or you'll get hurt by very bad. Bone armor? Maria cast bone armor on herself. Hmm. Yeah, I guess she's a necromancer. She can create the armor out of bones. That's actually pretty cool. George attacks. Isn't that something that is featured in Diablo as well? I get a feeling that's the case for a necromancer. Goat A takes 49 t points of damage. George defeats Goat B. All right. Good job, Aniki. Still no match to you. That great sword is really something. And Delanor is almost as strong as I am in melee combat. Uh, guys, you're you're speaking in gaming terms again. It's amazing if you consider she's a cleric. Or is it considered like a... Nah, not really. I was thinking melee combat is something that you would say in a video game, but not really. Not really. I think I'm just about average. Whatever. Alright, let's go! Wait. We're running in circles. So much for Jessica's brilliant strategy of always go left, kiddo. You don't want to talk about brilliant strategies. Apparently, the stairs might bring us to the middle of a floor. That's why it doesn't work. However, it's not a problem since I'm mapping every path we take. Doesn't it kind of suck that you're trying to create a map, but then at some point you're going to end up like not having like any space like at all? <laughs> That's always gotta suck. Like, you always gotta bring up, like, maybe, I don't know, like another piece of paper. And that's right. Guide us to unexplored parts, Aniki. Let's go. My god, imagine if the tunnel system in, you know, like, on Orkanjima Island is like this. Because I get to think that, like, the way I imagine it, it feels very straight. And, like, in the main story, that is, but here it's very. Like, it has a lot of. branching paths. Stairs! So, this is the right path! Let's. Oh. A group of goats draws near. Oh, crud! Just got attacks. Goat C takes 7 points of damage. <laughs> can I kill her? Please tell me I can kill the toad! <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Erika now has been uh, demoted to peanut, like, uh, peanut gallery. <laughs> With all this commentary, she's becoming annoying. Goat A attacks. Better takes 12 points of damage. Better attacks. Awesome blow! Goat A takes 96 points of damage. Better defeats Goat A. Alright. Double awesome blow! Ha ha ha! Revenge! That was quite a devastating attack. That's nothing, Kittle. The scythe has a 4 times multiplier on awesome blows. I can easily reach the third digit, Kittle. Oh, uh, 80 cup, metagaming. However, it's very improbable to deal an awesome blow with a scythe. Who cares, Kittle? What's really important is to deal a ridiculous amount of damage, Kittle. It never fails to make everyone else feel like a total loser, Skittle. Now that's really something to strive for, isn't it? I'll pay just for that end. Ah, definitely, Kittle. It already pays for all those boring parts about story and character development, Kittle. <laughs> really, Erika? Really? No, oh, I guess so. From, from Erika's perspective, you know, she would be the type of 
person to like in real life to say that all game stories are boring nowadays. And you know, there is an argument to be made about that. <laughs> At least in my opinion when it comes to western like AAA games and such. Like stories can become so boring for me in that aspect. Like do I even give a fuck about the story in Fallout 3? <laughs> Not really. I just want to beat the ever-living crap out of the super mutants. With my laser gowling gun! <laughs> Beller takes 14 points of damage. Goat C attacks. Beller takes 15 points of damage. Hey, why only me? Give me a break. Well, you are quite a powerful character with that great sword of yours, Beller. I think they are going to focus on you the most. <laughs> You're the one with the best defenses and got a lot of HP. Just do your job, Meat Shield. <laughs> that, sounds li that sounds like something Erika would say. And that's another thing. How could they all hit me with my AC? Damn cheaters. George attacks. Goat C takes 57 points of damage. George defeats Goat C. Maria cast Drain on Goat B. Yeah. They are undead. Well, I guess it would work on A1. A drain is like like draining HP from Rainbow. Maria takes 17 points of damage. What? Goat B absorbs 17 HP. Eee. Why? Maria, are you still helping the enemy? Mm -hmm. I didn't understand. <laughs> Good job using drain on an undead, Carol. I guess that is a huh? I mean, I, I you know, I get the idea behind an undead. Uh, like, you know, if you're to cast like purify on uh, on a human. You will purify them of stuff like that. But when it comes to an undead, like a zombie, if you use like purification on a zombie, they would hurt them. And... Actually, you know what? I don't remember a game specifically, but yeah, I get the thing that if you were to, to he actually heal a undead, it actually takes damage out of them. So... But then you're draining HP out of them, like, what? You're not actually giving them HP that... Oh, that actually makes sense. Okay, never mind. Oh, it's true. If you try that on undead, you get the opposite effect. Okay, in that case, we could use, like, some healing effect on them. I don't know if Maria has one like that. Hmm, <sighs> he's angry. <laughs> the other attacks. Alright. Well, now we know. Goat B takes 30 points of damage. Jessica attacks. Goat B takes 19 points of damage. Jessica defeats Goat B. Alright. The party gains 180 XP. The party obtains 2700 GP. Yeah! I killed it! I killed it! Did you see that? Don't get so cocky for such a pathetic damage, Carol. Well, we can go up now. Let's go! Whew. Alright. Uh, there's a message. What does it say? Let's see. Oh god, this is the epitaph, isn't it? Ah uh, ha ha ha, dot wolf. <laughs> The hell does that mean? I haven't the slightest clue. It looks like a... Like a file format. Whatever. <laughs> Let's just ignore it. An air chest. Alright. And Jessica opens the chest. The elephant is inside. Oh, g uh, elephant? Jessica quickly closes the chest again. 
I haven't seen anything. You haven't seen anything. Let's go back. Mm, guys, there's a problem. What is it, Daniki? We've already explored the third floor. What? Kettle? Are you sure you didn't miss something, Kettle? I'm totally sure. There's no error in my mapping. Okay. In that case, maybe this is one part of um, a floor three that is isolated. But if we were to go back to floor two and find like another different kind of stairs, like set of stairs, we're gonna go back to floor three, but on a completely separate uh, area, of floor three, which would be the leading, um, like it would lead to victory. What about the second floor? Did we explore all of it? Mm, no, there are still some paths we haven't checked. That's it then. But we thought this was the right path, but it's actually just a stupid dead end. Oh, pretty clever. Eh, this is so freaking boring. Okay. I got you back to the second floor. Alrighty then. <laughs> A greater goat draws near. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. This one is different. Greater goat, Kettle? What's so great about a stupid goat, Kettle? Can't you see? It's got one of those Star Wars blades. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. They are called. Lo. L O C I? Yeah, those things. Wait, there is an actual name for those blades? Well, I sure I sure did ever heard about that in the main story. I don't know if this is actually something canon or not. I don't think so. I bet they hurt. I mean, Delano will probably know the most about that because that's probably something that. I mean, she uses those. Not only that, but the uh, like the Inquisitors would surely know that as well. Yeah, after this fight, you'll be able to tell us if you're right. Uh, why me? Ooh. My headphones. Just got attacks. Greater Gold takes 13 points of damage. George attacks. Greater Gold takes 50 points of damage. Better attacks. Greater Gold takes 74 points of damage. Yeah, I was gonna say, that actually took a little bit more than, than a regular goat. It was truly a greater goat. Do we get like any update on all this? A greater goat. I wonder if we're gonna get like level ups or something. Hmm. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was actually surprised a little bit over there what happened. <laughs> okay. Eh. We didn't get to know how much damage he could dish. Not disappointing. I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah. Balor, he. Uh, he's a good asset. He is a he is a high experienced warrior. I thought you were supposed to bring us back on track, Kiro. Oh god, it's one of those kinds of mazes. It shifts. I'm just guiding you to unexplored paths. It's not my fault if they bring us to dead ends. Oh, okay. I thought that we were still on the on the third floor and actually close on us. But now apparently not. Well, there must be some way to proceed. Let's keep searching. Alright. A group of greater goats draws near. You know, I think I'll start to see a pattern here. Maria has diff on greater goat A. No! No! No, Maria, no! I think that's actually gonna damage us. Or it's not going to be effective. Greater Gold A is unaffected by Maria's magic. Eh, why? Because the undead are already dead and cannot die. Stupid! K 
kettle. You were supposed to say kettle there. Why is that stupid? Why is a witch? You know, go figure. A necromancer is not effective against uh, like undead. I mean, it makes sense game game wise, but you know, you would think that for someone who is master in controlling undead and like giving orders to undead, you would think that that a necromancer would be effective against undead as well because I don't know. Like, you're supposed to be the leader. You're supposed to instill the fear in your undead armies. So, for them to obey you. Otherwise, they're gonna attack you. And what are you gonna do then? Nothing. Your attacks are shit against them. So, you know, realistically speaking, you should be able to to do like, to deal like massive damage against the undead as well. I mean, you're, you're a necromancer. You're supposed to to be very good in understanding the undead to the point where you would know about their weaknesses and like strengths. So, I don't know. It, now that I think about it, it's kind of interesting to think about this. You're a stupid witch. Stupid. You're so stupid. Here we gotta take 15 points of damage. Hell. <laughs> no. Greater go A attacks. George takes 41 points of damage. <sighs> Oof. Wow. Mm. These ones are strong indeed. Just got attacks. Greater go A. Alright. Greater go A takes 8 points of damage. Eesh. Not a lot of damage as a rogue. George attacks Greater go A. And just like, uh, can you just uh, maybe. I don't know, hide in the shadows and do like a sneak attack on them? Like, do like attacks with advantage? Greater Goat A takes 56 points of damage. Delanor casts Mass Cure on the party. Better recovers 30 HP. So does George. So does Jessica. No, nothing for, for Delanor since she didn't get hit there, I think. And Maria, 30. Better attacks Greater Goat A. Greater Goat A takes 79 points of damage. It should be dead. Yep. Alright. Goat B attacks. But misses. Hee hee hee. You missed me. Now oh, I must be a rogue, kiddo. Oh, shut up! There are no attacks. Greater Goat B takes 42 points of damage. Just got attacks. Takes 9 points of damage. Maria casts Scorpion Charm on the party. Okay. Is that a Decapacity spell? It should protect us from like magical attacks, I guess. It is. What does that do? I think it's some kind of protection against attacks. It's more than a simple protection. Okay. Ooh, it reflects. Okay, that's cool. Go B takes 31 points of damage. Nice. Go B commits suicide. Oh, God. Uh, he said, fuck this, I'm out. Peace. Hmm. Guys, are all this computer role-playing games like this? Well, yes, more or less. Why? They suck. <laughs> I mean, the only thing that I can do is attack, 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 attack. This is freaking boring. Mmm, you know, I can see that. Then again, this is 1986, like how much can you do in these kinds of games? <laughs> I guess being a mage gives you more choices, but what about the melee jobs? You can use items. I don't have any item apart the potion I got earlier. Actually, since you're a rogue, you can use the steal command. Big deal. I don't think those goats have anything worth the effort. Well, I mean, <laughs> realistically speaking, you are right, but you could steal some gold. They have gold. 
I mean, we're already turning into a video game, like, man as well. The rogues have the special ability sneak attack that deals a bazillion of damage. Yeah, that's what I was talking about before, Jessica. Try that. What? How come nobody told me that? Uh, because the undead are immune to it. Ah, oh, great. Is there anything that undead monsters aren't immune to? Undead are immune to sneak attacks? What the fuck? I have never heard of something like that. You're weak to fire, Kettle. Dead bodies burn well, Kettle. Actually, you know what? She may be spitting right over here because fire is light, too. Which would be pretty advantageous against them. That and, uh, like, recently I've been watching a little bit of uh, a thriller bark once again, like the arc from One Piece. I've been watching a little bit of that, and that's a weakness there as well. Where did you learn that from? I learned that from Kinzo, Kero. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Another wonderful chest. Alright. Jessica opens the chest. The party obtains 2,000 gold pieces. Guys, I have another problem. Oh boy, I don't like the sound of it. Don't tell me we have sorted the whole second floor. I feel I have to do exactly that. It's gonna be, Kettle. You must have done something wrong, Kettle. Yeah, like, what the fuck? Are you telling me that we have to go through, through floor one? And then you will lead us to a separate area of floor two, which will lead to a separate area of floor three? What the fuck? <laughs> My mapping isn't wrong. Eh, then what about the first floor? Unless there are still paths we haven't explored there. You gotta be kidding me. We gone through all this trouble just to go back to the starting point? Yes, more or less. This is freaking great. Ah, uh, this is a maze. What did you expect? Alright, then I guess so. <gasps> Sagtaro! What the fuck? A fearsome lion draws near. Oh no! I'm a fearsome lion! Oh no! Oh no! I'm gonna eat you! Do you hear or see anything? No. I don't either. Why did we stop? <laughs> you don't see him? Only Maria sees him? Oh no! Wait! He must fight me and. Oh! No, Sagutaro! <laughs> He's one moment to shine in this uh, fan game. Like, did Maria have nothing to say about that? Okay. What the fuck? <laughs> like, I'm sorry, ladies and gents. Up until this point, this was a perfect uh, Yumineko fan game and such, but because of that, I have to deduct like minus one point. <laughs> so it's nine point. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, Gold Kun draws near. This is a named monster. Gold Kun. Uh, don't tell me, is that the same goat from episode 4 that was trying his best to fight for his sister, like, back home? <laughs> uh, what? A named monster? What's that? Basically, monster that is a bit more special. Normally monsters don't have proper names. They're just defined as what they are and not as who they are. Well, yeah, so? Named monsters instead have a proper name that's unique for them. Okay, and who the hell cares? It means they're particularly strong among their kind. And by killing them, you can get unique items. Hmm. Now that's 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 the sound interesting. Yes, named monsters are special. But, wait a second. This guy looks just like any other goat. No, no, this one is special. He's Goku. I mean... Limited resources. You gotta... If they are using, like, the same sprites, you gotta work with what you have, I guess. I still don't see any difference. 
Anyway, if he's a name monster, what's his name? <laughs> Goku's name is Goku-kun. Is that even a name? Oh, if I had a kid like him, I'd call him Goku. <laughs> when I, when I say like that, it, it sounds really similar to Goku. <laughs> oh no, it's uh, it's the Goku of the goats. Brace yourselves, folks. He's gonna destroy the entire like maze with one. Uh, wait, hold on a second. My brain is uh, trying to process. Like I'm trying to create like a a goat version of a Kamehameha. Uh, go to, go to ha or something. I don't know. I, I ruined that joke. No way. If that was my kid, the last name I'd give. Wait, what the hell am I even thinking? I don't know. Let's see. But misses. Uh oh. This got tax. But misses. Better attacks. Oh god, this is gonna be a problem. Like, what the fuck? So, is there an escape option? We're not escaping. This is our only chance to get the unique item that Goku possesses. We're gonna get killed. George attacks. Okay. He's not involved, bro. We can do it. It's just that we missed a lot. Yes. Well, only one out of four of your four attacks went through. He's got insane evasion. If I could hit him, anyone can. It's just a matter of time. All right. Ooh, that's a problem. We don't have that time. We're gonna die first. <laughs> Name monsters are strong. Hey, Maria, cast that Scorpion Charm spell you used before. Mm. Maria cast Scorpion Charm on the party. Yeah, that's a, that's actually a good idea. Maybe we'll hit him back. Delanor, I need healing here. If that monster attacks me again, I'm a goner. Understood. Thanks, Jessica. The Scorpion Charm is protecting us. Oh, right. All right, Goku attacks. Ooh, what the fuck? Goku destroys the scorpion. <gasps> no. Eh? Interesting. It appears that Goku is too strong to be affected by the spell. Oh god, this is gonna be something. But misses. We are doomed. Don't despair. I'm going to hit him this time. Watch. All right. Come on, better. Okay, well, oh wow, not even... So not only does he have like massive... Is evasive level, but... Uh, he's quite tanky. And by tanky, I mean he has quite the defense to lower... Like, the damage dealt. Because usually he does like 50 or 70 damage against enemies, but now it's different. I think he's way over leveled in comparison to us. I think that's the problem. Yes, I told you. George attacks. Come on. But misses. Maria casts the K on Goku. Is that gonna work? Goku is affected by Maria's magic. Man. We surely needed someone like him in My Hero Academia against Shigaraki. Damn. Yeah. Goku is so strong. Yeah. This is bad. This is really bad. Don't give up. We can do it. Down or cast major cure on Jiska. Yeah, this is what the DND is about, ladies and gents. Jiska recovers 53 HP. Attempts to steal from Goku. But fails. Well, well I tried. That's not the time for that. We need to kill him fast. And what do we expect me to do anyway? Good point, Kettle. George attacks. Awesome, Kettle. Well. 
Eee. Jesus. Ouch. Hey, I think we should make Maria cast Scorpion Charm every turn. Maybe if he gets broken, he can still absorb one attack. Yeah, that is a strategy. Unfortunately, that can't be done. Why? Scorpion Charm can only be used once per encounter. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess. Like, magic usage in D&D, &D, it is a lot more... Um, limited in comparison to, like, a veto game. Like, you would have, like, MP, and you would restore your MP with potions, but in Dungeons & Dragons, that's a little bit different. I think. I don't know. Why is it that whenever something sounds too good to be true, there's always some kind of rule that gimps it? I mean, it's called balancing. There are attacks. Uh, come on. Okay, 15 points of damage. My neck has Bone Spear on Goat Coon. Okay. Yeah, there you go. There's a magic attack that Maria can use against the undead. Well done, Maria. Better attacks. Come on, better, come on. Ah, damn it. Okay, Jessica. Awesome, bro. Goku takes 32 points of damage. <gasps> Jessica! Hell yeah! Did you see that? I totally kicked his ass. I'm a killing machine. I'm a death incarnate. Shut up. <laughs> now I'll cast Magic Cure on Battle. Okay, good. You record for 60 HP. Goat Kun attacks. George takes 71 points of damage. That's insane! You just need two rounds to drop me from full to zero HP. And you still want to fight? Yes, I won't give up. Well said. Let's kill him. Okay, another bone spear. 70 points of damage. Misses. Oh, come on. Don't give up. He's almost dead, I'm sure. Okay, come on. Come on, better. 65 points of damage. Whoa. Congratulations, folks. That should be a lot of experience. Better defeats Goku. Oh, yeah! Way to go! <laughs> we made it! We made it! I told you we could do it. Good job, Better. It wasn't that hard after all. We rock. But wait, what about our reward? Alright, there you go. A little bit of a delayed uh, reward there. A plate of macro curry. Hey George, you should probably eat that. You have like uh, like half HP right now. What the hell is that? That's Goku's unique item. I don't want it. It's gross. <laughs> Jessica would know it. She like Masao probably forces Jessica to eat it like every single day. <laughs> Jessica dropped the plate of macro curry. Oh, what a waste. Alright, well. Let's continue. Let's continue the adventure. Hey, Bella. You're the one who's leading the way. Walking in front of the party, right? Uh, yeah. Why? Because he just stepped into a trapdoor. <gasps> oh my god. And we're not gonna know what that trap entails until the next part, ladies and gents. Hey!